Hello. I've just finished these two. And I stopped the video because I ran out of ink. But I made some more. And I also drew the the branches for two more paintings. I did this one with little thin branches. And this one with fat branches. Because this is still quite damp. And I had bleeding in the last one. Here. Right here. You draw the the stalk first, then when you go over the leaves, it bled, and I think it made it too dark, and kind of not as clean. You can see it here, too. So, I'm gonna let that one, this one, dry a bit so I don't get the same effect, but these, because they're so skinny, they're already dry. The main problem is that I don't have an idea in my mind for where the leaves should go. I'm thinking, yeah, I've been thinking about like an overall shape, like what would some like cascading shapes look like. Because the reality is that in a lot of instances you can backfill the, um, the the stalks, the branch parts. But if the lead, it's like, if everything has to make sense together. You can't really scrimp on anything, actually. But I want to develop an intuitive sense for it, and I'm doing that through experimentation. Um, because, I mean, my experience in the past has been, like, at a certain point, I'll just, like, get a feel for the, for the shape or the flow or something, but <laughs> it's probably the long way around, but it's more fun for me. <laughs> I like to experiment, and it's also satisfying once you finally figure it out, like you can feel like a real pro, for me at least, then it, it just becomes easy and fun. You're like whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So I have a general idea in mind. I'm going to start in this in this section and then maybe go down here. I'm thinking maybe two two areas of leaves. Like a cascading area here and a cascading area here. I'm really bad at cascading leaves. That's uh, something that is really, really hard for me. So I'm just going to go for it. Go crazy. That's pretty. One thing that I've noticed is like that I found has helped create uh, unity in some of my. Um, the paintings that I've done is to match if you if you start painting and you realize that oh the leaves I'm making they're all kind of broken here and they're kind of this shape like this is now kind of a, a pattern and it's really helps the unity of the painting if you can match that's this style in the rest of the painting so, like, you can see how different the style is compared to these. These are kind of very delicate, feathery, you could call them feathery. And I think something is playing in the background. Someone is screaming. Oh, it's a concert. Okay. <laughs> um, and the tips are, are well defined. They're a little bit feathery, but they're much better defined than these. Right? And the overall shape of the leaf is different. This one is more of like a wedge wedge shape, whereas these are really... I would call them feathery. So if in the feathery one you start to have stuff with broken, it can very quickly take over the aesthetic and like, I don't really like, I'm not happy with this section. But. And if I were to suddenly go really soft and feathery on this one, it would really 
because it uh, it would bring attention to itself, and the eye would be like, wait, why? Why are they these two different styles? So where did I want to go next? So the current way that I'm approaching groupings is that each grouping has to make coherent visual sense on its own. And then you kind of, like, you can layer them. So when you see, like, a big complicated section, it's actually made up of coherent groupings that are overlaid in a way that makes sense for how bamboo looks. I have a very dry brush situation going on. Yeah, not sure about this one. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to do something down here. I'm out of ink already. A bit in dirty water. We're just making a little bit of moisture here. Okay. Maybe here? Maybe here? It's like where should the the next the next center be? doing the centers, there's something wrong here. It looks like too, like it should be, there should be more of a bump. we're already getting. So one thing that is very nice is, you know, black and gray, right? That adds visual interest. Sometimes just powerful black silhouettes can be very effective and beautiful. But also you can have really pretty effects with gray. A two, you can have a two-tone effect black and gray, one whole thing in black, one whole thing in gray, or you can have kind of a gradient, like here, where there's a few that are much lighter than the others. It can create a really beautiful effect. Made another clump. When you don't know what to do, add more water. <laughs> if anyone's watching this who's also a painter, I would love to know how you plan where the leaves are going to go in the composition.
I want. Maybe it'll look cool in a dress. <laughs> Actually, now I kind of like it. It's kind of messy, but it's also fun. Maybe that's one strategy you can do. I could have moved this clump might have been better more here. And then it would have been more balanced with the grays. Now that I have this, uh, so my brush right now, one thing that is good to know is like how much liquid and how uh, dark is the ink that's currently in your brush. And can you use that somehow, right? So you can test that. But I have a pretty good sense now for how dark it is. And, you know, you can see with every stroke it gets drier and lighter. And, you know, the last few strokes that I made were really dry and light. So at this point I can either mix up a new batch or I can keep going with what I have. This light color. I can use this dirty water. I don't know what to do here. I think maybe what I'll do is stop the video for now, mix some more ink, and come back. Alright, thanks for watching.